The purpose of this exercise is to dramatize to your students the existence of scarcity and the fact that every choice has a cost. So it's probably best if you're going to choose this exercise to do it after you've taught the concept of scarcity. So students now know intellectually that you can't have everything you want. They also know intellectually that every choice has a cost. And so now we want them to see it in action. In order to do that, you're going to need um, approximately, well, depending on your class size, you're going to break the students into groups of four, and you're going to give every one of those groups a small bag of M&Ms. Now, you can use M&Ms. If you choose not to do that, you can use beans. Um, you can use peas. You can use any small objects. The advantage of M&Ms is that you don't have to count them out each time you do the class. And they're probably more fun than beans. So I always use M&Ms. You're going to distribute the handout, your housing priorities, to your students. And these are available from our website. Uh, you can download them. They're also in the Money Wise Teen Teacher Manual. Um, and so you're going to hand out one of these, uh, your housing priorities handouts, to each group. Each student doesn't need one. You simply uh, hand them out to the group. Then you're going to tell the students that um, they're a couple of about uh, 30, I'm trying to get the children's ages right, probably 35 years old. And um, they have an 11-year-old girl and a 13 year 13-year-old boy. They're looking for a house. And so they're trying to decide what kind of house they want. And so you ask the students, take a look at this handout and decide in each row what kind of quality of life do you want. Tell them it's very important that they not consider money. Don't, don't worry about money at all. Uh, let's just look at what you would like to have. So, for example, if we ask them um, how many uh, or what size house would you like, uh, they can either circle the one zero under uh, a uh, small size less than 1,000 square feet. So they circle that zero in column A. Or they can go to column B and they say, you know what, I want a bigger house than that. I want a moderate sized house, about 1,500 square feet. And so then they would circle the two zeros there. Or they can go to column C and they can say, I'd like 2,000 square feet. Uh, they circle the three zeros. If they look at the number of bedrooms, how many bedrooms do they want? Well, if they go to column A, they get two bedrooms. They circle the one zero. If they go to column B, uh, they get three bedrooms. They circle the two zeros. If they go to column C, they, uh, they get four or more bedrooms, and so they circle the three zeros. Finally, in terms of bathrooms, if we go down to bathrooms, uh, column A gives them one bathroom, so they circle that zero. Column B gives them two bath or one and a half to two bathrooms. They circle the two zeros, or they want two and a half to three bedrooms, uh, bathrooms, and they circle the three zeros. It's important to emphasize to them that they should not worry about money. Money is not an issue here. And so you give them about five minutes to think about what kind of house they want. Usually, the handout will look a little bit like this uh, once they have completed their, uh, their discussions. They will have circled column C for location. They will have circled column C for neighborhood facilities. And they will have circled all of the column Cs. Uh, we told them to look at what they wanted. We told them not to worry about money. So uh, their handout might look like this. <clears throat> now, some of them may decide that Circling everything in column C is a little greedy, and so they might move over to column B in a few categories. Uh, but in general, it's going to look very much like this because you told them, don't worry about money. So now you tell them that, unfortunately, we do have to face reality, and money is an issue.
we said in the beginning that resources were limited. So they actually have a particular income which is represented by the M&Ms. So what we're going to ask them to do now, distributing one bag of M&Ms to each group, open that bag of M&Ms, and I'm going to cheat because I can never open these things, use some scissors, <coughs> and uh, put the M&Ms on the handout. Now, if they, in fact, wanted all of the rows, they wanted column C in all the rows, they would need 42 M&Ms, and they don't have them. And so they're going to have to decide how to use these M&Ms to get what they want. So they'll discuss, okay, location, multifamily or commercial heavy traffic, good schools, um, multi or single family, moderate traffic, better schools, um, prime location, single family, light traffic, excellent schools. Let's assume they say, you know, that's really very important. So they put three M&Ms in the schools category. To them, the education of their children is the most important thing of all. So what they're doing is they're setting priorities exactly as they should do. And then they might say, well, you know, let's, let's just put the M&Ms all in column A, see what that gets us. This would be one strategy. Um, and see if now we can afford a, a little bit extra in some other categories. And so they'll, they will decide. My number one priority is education. That means that I'm not going to get four bedrooms. Um, if, in fact, I'm going to uh, spend a few M&Ms on, um, say, a medium-sized si medium room, so I'm going to need two M&Ms there, well, I'm going to have to give something else up. And so they'll distribute these M&Ms in, in some manner. And we can assume that it looks something like that. It doesn't make very much difference. And then you simply ask them, um, well, why didn't you stay with all of the column Cs? And they're going to say, well, we didn't have enough M&Ms. And you're going to say, all right, now let's see. You had all these wants, but you didn't have the resources to fulfill all of those wants. It'd be great if we could come up with a word that describes that. Does anybody in the class have a word that might start with S and end in Y and have some letters in between that describes this situation? And then the hope is that they're going to come up with scarcity. Scarcity says that we don't have enough resources to fulfill all our wants. And you will, of course, uh, praise that student. And, um, and then you'll say, all right, so when you chose whatever it was you chose, um, did you have to give anything up? And they're going to say, yes, we had to give up the four bedrooms, and we had to give up uh, the major landscaping yard. And then you're going to ask them, gee, what do you think economists call that? When you have to give up an opportunity to do something uh, because scarcity exists, what might we call that? And hopefully, one of your brilliant students will say, opportunity cost. And then you will have demonstrated to them, and they will have demonstrated to you the fact that scarcity exists. When scarcity exists, we have to set priorities when we make choices we pay a cost. And that's the purpose of the exercise. An extension of the exercise is marginal thinking. Once you get to marginal analysis, you can then say to your students, you know, this, uh, this was kind of a bad situation because we only had so many M&Ms. And by the way, the M&Ms normally have anywhere from about 18 to 20 in each bag. Um, so, is there a way that we could get more M&M so that we could fulfill more of our wants? And the answer is yes, indeed, we can. And there's a handout that's, that gives them these, um, these alternatives. They could gain two M&Ms if dad works in the kids' classrooms once a week for two hours. He won't be able to go to his exercise classes on those days. And so 
Um, they're getting a few more M&Ms, which is the marginal concept, but they're giving up uh, dad's exercise classes. And it goes all the way down. They can gain 15 M&Ms. Uh, if mom or dad gives up two years of being with the family and completes their bachelor's degree. So use this exercise to teach scarcity and opportunity cost. And then when you come to marginal analysis and you're teaching marginal analysis, you can come back to the housing priorities and offer them these alternatives. And the basic question when we're teaching marginal analysis is, is the additional benefit, the two M&Ms or the three M&Ms or the 15 M&Ms, is the additional benefit worth the additional cost? And so this exercise can work for two separate lessons, but always at two different times. Uh, don't try and teach it all at one time because the primary rule of, of using these games is one game, one concept. And we actually violated that this time by teaching two concepts, scarcity and opportunity cost. But don't throw marginal analysis in in the same class.